What happens when we've been through some sort of terrifying event or events in our life? PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Let's discuss this on today's Ask a Shrink. It's amazing how PTSD can show up in our life and surprise us because the feelings haven't fully been processed and or the event or events sort of rewired our brain. And then we have to take a look at and see how that rewiring shows up. So with the traumatic event or events, you've either witnessed it or you experienced it for yourself. The symptoms can be fairly common for most people. It can be intrusive thoughts, flashbacks, nightmares, a sense of panic that comes up from time to time. Where is that coming from? Sometimes it's confusing if it's an event or events that happened a long time ago. And this is why it needs unthreading, it needs looking at. Now, the reason I keep repeating an event that happened or events that happened is oftentimes a lot of people consider it's more related to an event. I survived a plane crash. I was on the battlefield and saw my buddy killed right next to me. And yes, those events are traumatic, but what perhaps is equally as common, if not more common, is something that's spread out maybe in a more subtle way over a lot of your childhood. For example, let's say you're a victim of some sort of emotional abuse over many years. It's subtle. Nobody really talks about it. Nobody points it out from birth all the way until you move out of your home until let's say you're 21 years old. You've tolerated this from your mother. Well, you move out and you think everything's okay. She's gone. I barely talk to her anymore. But then when you're 25 or 30 or 35, you go into a therapist because you're suffering from the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, in this case, because it's a series of events over a long period of time, we'll call that complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's determined by whether something was an event or a series of events. Keep in mind, however, the symptoms can occur though within a month of an event. Now, the symptoms can vary for different people on how they show up, the levels of intensity and so on, but it typically shows up as four types. And one type is changes in our physical or emotional reaction. You're always on guard a little bit. You're tensed up. You're waiting for something. Something's looming there. You're not even sure what it is. Or why do I have all this shame and guilt? Why am I carrying these deep, dark feelings? I'm not sure where they're coming from. Another type is changes in our thinking or our mood. Changes that we don't want. Changes that are not fun or good at the time. This could be a sense of hopelessness, feeling emotionally numbed out. Very little interest in doing things that perhaps in the past you did enjoy. Another type is intrusive thoughts, maybe a bit of rumination. And the last type is avoidance. You don't want to think about what's happened to you. Therapists see this sometimes in session. We'll try to delve into the client's past and they're leaving out a big chunk of something. Maybe they don't remember certain years and that can be when the event or the events happen. But there's many, many more symptoms that can show up in all sorts of ways, sort of being hyper aroused, always on always on edge, ready for action. It's hard to just settle down and relax. Somatic symptoms of feeling nauseous, upset stomach, dizziness when, when something's reminding you of the event. Another common symptom is some sort of sleeping disturbance. Going to sleep is just not an easy process. And part of that because as you settle to sleep, we have less defense against all the thinking that pulls us away from the feeling. So when we're real busy, and sometimes that's a symptom being hyper busy, a workaholic, that's to avoid feeling the feelings that sort of pop up, can pop up, when you're settling down to sleep. You don't have the ego strength, we'll say, to defend against those feelings right then and there in that limbo period before you fall asleep or just after you've fallen asleep. So you can wake up with a start. Perhaps you're having nocturnal panic attacks. As I mentioned earlier, nightmares. It's just not an easy, comfortable process to fall asleep. Now, there can be many different reasons for that, of course, but it's worth looking into if it's related to post-traumatic stress disorder. So if you're a victim of something more covert, being a victim of covert incest, emotional incest is a good one. You've been traumatized because it's complex. It went on for many, many years. The complex is related to the fact that over a period of time, perhaps your identity was wiped away, you were victimized somehow, nobody believed you when you tried to talk about it, nobody wanted to hear you, maybe it even skipped a few years every so often, maybe something happened when you were aged three to five, Nothing happened in regards to the family dynamics when you were five to eight. But once again, some sort of abuse started when you were eight. 
We can see how confusing this is, right, to a child. How, how are they gonna handle that? If they're not dealing with their feelings, and of course most kids don't know how to do that, especially in dysfunctional family like this, then those feelings don't just go away. No, they get repressed. They get shoved down as a coping mechanism, and they may very well pop up as PTSD symptoms when you're an adult. So a couple tips to work with this if this is happening in your life is number one, respect and validate your experience. This was real, you went through it. You didn't do anything wrong. This was done to you or something happened around you or near you. So let's say because of that, you don't feel safe in the world, hardly ever. Are you gonna blame yourself for that? No, so start with, this is a normal reaction to A, B, or C, to what happened to you. Validate it and then share it with others. Hopefully a therapist, the more you share it, the more it gets normalized, the more normalized it is, the more it stops being a huge issue. It may still be somewhat of an issue as you work through it, but it's more like a gnat on your shoulder that you just brush away the more you work with it. It's not some huge, powerful thing that's dominating your life. Pay attention to your breathing. That's an easy thing to do. Breathe yourself through it. That's one thing that people forget to do. Pay attention to your breath. It grounds you. It's something that's always happening automatically. We just take it for granted, but we can use it. We can use it as a tool to help level us out. And because one of the coping mechanisms was not to feel, that's what PTSD is all about. We block our feelings and we live in that trauma. Something was just too much to take on. It was too overwhelming at the time. So we want to work with our senses. So the five senses, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're tasting, perhaps what you're smelling, and of course, feeling. Somebody may dismiss this and think, oh, how's that really going to help? It helps because it's drawing you back into your body. What PTSD in essence is all about is leaving our body. Something's too much, so we want to dissociate and get away. So we want to use tools to draw us back in, to stay in our body, to feel our feelings. That takes a bit of work. And of course, get some therapeutic help if that's available to you. So quick little PTSD, CPTSD 101 class here, but it's important to think of this if you're a victim of any kind of abuse, because it may show up at any time. And then the more you know, the more power you have. Knowledge is power. So feel free to leave any comments below. If you've suffered through PTSD symptoms, what's that been like for you? Perhaps you'd like to share, we can all learn from that. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shore.